Stani sa ovirs, Zainaga, Aeon och Indi, Don Van Van Pasami, Princess Yukunayan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothea Kirilova, Eunice Raya Chikawa, Mika Niko, Shinkim Kiyongoska. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother. Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Plays Master Eternal War. Written between 2011 to 2012. With the help of my friends. Matthew 16 28. As ye I can guarantee this truth, some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A. A tilde a tilde one distant star that shines with the power of God, celebrating the life in the universe, home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets every plant and every animal carries it as light in its own court of the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe as a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need a eh? Atilda Atilda I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today the creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love befall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May this small fiction world be blessed from the heavens and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. Matilda eh? in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. Eh? The Prologue The first prime to manifest the universe were the impulse which became God. The manifestation of intelligence locked in a single electromagnetic symbol. First were two values plus positivity meaning kindness, happiness, and positivity. And the other one. Minus, negativity meant to represent evil, nothingness, pain, despair, and sorrow. The binary code 0 and 1. These two simple values became our universe as basic foundation. The language that started everything billions of years ago, the first elemental values, good and evil were thus created equal and yet unequal. The world was created out of this opposition. Kindness was always meant to oppose evil. But, was that true? These two opposing forces were created alongside each other. They were meant to create something by opposing each other just as neutrons create a single atom in space. But this opposition can take many forms different structures can therefore be created. Different atoms in turn create different types of matter, right? We therefore have a language created out of opposition. It's like in these ancient scriptures where a tilde a tilde word became matter a. So if our world is something similar to a book, or maybe even to a computer program, or are it as designers? Can we assume it as designer is the intelligent energy that began experimenting with our basic values? Is that God? Could this even be called a God? So let's begin once more. Who or what is God? Originally in ancient societies, God was portrayed as an ancient patriarchal figure, in the same manner as leaders are presented. God was actually considered to be a very powerful leader. A leader in every aspect. A religious leader like a high priest, and at the same time, as a king. The term of God is in fact similar in meaning to both these figures, because God is considered to be both the high priest, and a very benevolent king. But is this portrait of God true? Yes and no, because it was what we could call popular demand this kind of God figure was created to keep up with the illusion or background of a dream, like game world we all live in, and then again the true God is nothing like we expect him to be. It is the creator of all forms, despite not having a form for itself not requiring any to exist. But the ancient minds of people needed clear forms that they could understand and categorize this mighty creator deserved to be celebrated, worshipped, praised and used for gains of these that didn't possess such might. Therefore religion was created mixing knowledge based on observation with lies and doctrinology, creating first societies that were based on beliefs that its leaders were the sons of gods destined to govern humanity, which eventually introduces another item of worship. It has the symbol of greed and selfishness, money. Divisions were created by the possession of this item and society was leagued into its illusions and away from the real God. 
Eventually all of these things became more mixed and twisted and were lead to our current state of affair. Despite these lies and deceptions, the truth has not completely disappeared. These are locked in ancient scriptures ready to enlighten all those who dare to seek it. The old ancient prophets directed by the light helped to create the foundation of our divine world, despite the darkness and ignorance appearing to control everything it has on it as hands. The light taught us to love and inspired to seek out the truth about our world. The same light that didn't disappear at all just hiding between the darkness that spread and angled by our highly advanced world. This knowledge is presented to you as a tiny fragment, but it has its own unique role to play in the events that were yet to come. Come. Our story begun in the dark chapel place inside some structure. The chapel itself was full of dark aura and violet energy mist was flowing in the air creating a buzzling energy sound that filled the area. It was very dark and gloomy a truly mysterious and perhaps terrifying place. Without no life the first thing that really would catch anyone's attention would be grey ancient columns that went upwards. These columns were inscripted in ancient hieroglyphic language. Spells that were cast upon this temple to make it unnoticeable to the dark gods, god, and any other beings that could detect any paranormal activity. The environment was stable not a single wind blow. In the darkness near the columns green sacrificial fires were burning producing the violet smokes. These fires stood on strange pot, like constructions locked in by energy barriers that hold the fire and its contents, while releasing a violet smoke which was a key component in the magical barriers that were used to hide this magical shrine. The columns were lightened up as different hieroglyphs were lighted in different color and magical interface that told its users that their secret was being safe. The floor of this chapel was dark marble, and the columns grey. Sacrificial fireplaces were set in the asymmetrical manner, while in the middle a red road was created, as the floor was lighted up by a powerful red light that acted like a red carpet. The shrine had an interesting oddity to it, as in the skies you could see entire galaxies, red, blue, yellow, and in different other colors. The shrine was located in the first dimension, that is called by me Achillean. This mysterious dimension was both a border between dimensions and a dockyard of creation. It was also used to house the most dangerous demonic criminals which couldn't be re-socialized and were dangerous to the outside. This dimension was God's safety measure to keep all dangerous ideas out of the material world, to store energy and to give birth to different dimensions created by single ideas. It is funny how people belittle their imagination not being able to understand how a single thought might influence entire galaxies, the dimension which most visit only in their dream state, to throw away all their thoughts which they produce during their normal activity, like a field that was always filled with seeds that were human and demonic thoughts the power of they reminds this place could materialize every thought and therefore every even unrealistic structure could materialize and that's how this dark chapel was created. The chapel where the entire story begun, a continuation of the battle I fought 75 years ago the story which I thought was already over, was now to continue the carpet was shining red, as a young boy was walking in it walking to his destination the young boy stood on the gigantic rim that bordered the glass windows, their size as if crafted from clear consideration for gods. As the silhouette turned and walked alongside them, its shadow paced the brilliant red carpet. He stopped and crouched down, his shadow a prying creature now, the boy's eyes locked to the ground. His blunt hair shrieking out from under the thin clothes for his hood, those who have viewed from the top will never forget the view he echoed. Though it was a whisper but it succeeded in haunting every brick of the chapel. His eyes sparkled, Dietrich was getting restless. The dark shadow birds passed him as he made his way to what obviously appeared to be a throne room the entire place was filled with the violet smoke that carried red energy lightings which in some weird manner greeted with Dietrich as he walked to his destination mumbling something to himself he was awaited and his restlessness came from the fact he was raying. The dark shadow birds looked at the boy with their red shiny eyes growling terrifyingly this was a very ominous place omnios the thought only made him chuckle. From somewhere inside him a hollow voice was screaming unfathomable things to him more I want more he narrowed his eyes absent-mindedly, and a black raven croaked out in alert. He sighed, he felt his strength increasing with time, and he liked it. He looked at the blue stone on his ring, no, he loved it. After being sick for such a long time, who knew this would be it? What a foolish world he told merrily to the perplexing bird, then he made his way. 
In front of him golden stairs going above to a dark marble throne, and this figure sitting on it looking like a handsome dark-haired man. Sitting in the same manner as if he was the messiah fabled saver of ancient worlds however this holly appearance was deceitful, as the nature of this being that sat on the throne this man, that looked into the distance dressed in black robes with belts crafted out of energy, who gazed upon the boy walking over on the golden stair smiling gently as his favorite puppet made his way towards him. As he while you finally came mightiscopely he decided to speak with a calm dark toned voice Desip fully making the boy feel comfortable while in reality he held nothing but mere contempt to the creatures of the lower worlds, but this puppet could be useful, and probably it was the main reason he bared its presence the boy knew nothing about evil ambitions of the dark god, before him the dark god was the master of destruction a crowned archangel whose influence reached the far reaches of known universe. Feared by many his dreadful ambitions scared all creation the entire chapel sung its strange song glorifying the evil master, and this spiritual song was heard everywhere in every brick and in every part of the matter adding to the metaphysical experience of this destructive place, the shrine which was engulfed in darkness gale a mouth's prison, and main base of operations his only known home was this darkness that was created from depths of his own hearth. The chapel itself was like a dark prayer for destruction, like a desperate plea, to end all creation, why would one want to be destroyed? If one believes everything around him is a lie, and cannot bring himself to find goodness in others he will not see any of it in himself, pushing further towards eternal darkness and nothingness this is the power of darkness, that scientifically could be described as depression this too is a sign of corruption and darkness, that wants to shatter souls, and destroy hearths, how many wars were fought because of this? How many wars were to begun because of this? Dietrich felt his own version of serenity as he approached the majestical dark figure. His base had increased, once he left the golden stairs, let's get this over with. He was fed up with this old-fashioned door he met with. A smile played at his lips as he felt the unknown force push him down, crushing him to a bow. Ah, uh, clever. Very clever. He loved the way Gale Mouth played God. Once he had fancied the idea himself of Gale Mouth as his own personal god. But he had outgrown such foolish child's play. My my. Now what have you to hide from me, my lord? The next instant his cocky smile was replaced by a groan, his grey eyes to a fiery colour. His heart bore malicious lust and his mind was in nightmarish pursuits as Dietrich clenched his teeth, his face hidden by the blunt curtain his hair made. Gale a mouth, indeed very clever. Dietrich hoped he was hearing his thoughts, because he had nothing to hide. He couldn't care less if Gale a mouth smashed his muscles and splintered his bones. Dietrich would meet Gale a mouth's eyes, even if he was greeted by Void. He leaned on the pressure biting his lip and tasting his own blood. What have you to hide? Was I not made to be perfect? Dietrich screamed in his head. He was shaking all over. Greet my gaze master. Grant me that one wish quit the show and let me be. Gale a mouth looked at his puppet sliding his fingers on the brown wooden ornaments of his throne his eyes greeted with Dietrich eyes as the boy stood on the dark marble floor on top of the golden stairs and in front of the red throne Gale a mouth was sitting on a small smirk came on Gale a mouth's face while he was amused by the boy's thoughts. A ZTHERE isn't a single thing worth of being perfect in my eyes, as everything is a deceptful illusion, nothing more than lies created to torment the weak-minded fools. This world is full of disquisting decay which must be clean shed a said gale a mouth, as his dreadful hollow gaze meet with Dietrich eyes insisting fear in the boy's mind, as he was looking at the being that erred to show itself in front of him as he yo you are to perform few simple tasks before your usefulness comes to an end. A proclaimed gale a mouth making his desires known to the boy he procured as a mere tool to grant his ambitions. He looked at the boy's reaction feeling a bit fearful and detestful just as if he was reliving something painful. Tarnished by violent emotions created by the darkness inside him, he hold himself in one place not allowing his anger to drag him into lower pits of true hell he unknowingly created for himself. Green energy lightened the marbles the boy was standing on making magical symbols show themselves these symbols told a dreadful ancient story of an old sorcerer that found out the most mysterious knowledge of the universe and because he knew the truth this made him detest these that didn't know it making his pride hate all of existence. Dietrich started chuckling, his eyes were drooping. He might as well be intoxicated by the situation. 
Finally, the coward is out of his shell. His thoughts were fairly frank. His body shook with laughter and he managed to speak between convulsions. Too bad you are in my head, eh? But you already knew that, and then on a louder note you know everything. He fell on his knees, still in a fit of mad laughter. Two, T-T-O-T-T-O-O -T -T -O -O bad. He stammered. Gail Amouth looked at the boy being intoxicated with Dietrich's fear and feeling more amused by the darkness that befallen this once cheerful child. Gail Amouth once again lifted his gaze towards the boy. As he I know of your failures, do not fail me again, gather the chosen children it's time to grant their destiny, then you are to make contact with Dark Master inform him the time has come to enact the proceed you regale a mouth raised his hand calling the red energy toward him making it gather towards the stairs, and Angbluff then forcing him to push it back as it formed whirlpools which then materialized into some glass eclipse containers. As observe, these are the holy spiritual containers for the darkness you create with these fold we will start the anti-god spell which will nullify all of creation do well my disciple, and your nightmares will disappear. a regale a mouth proclaimed showing him parts of his plan making sure he will describe everything to dark master and follow through with Golomouth's ambitions. Dietrich nodded with a detestable grin. Your wish is my command, master. He closed his eyes and willingly bowed his head to the ground. His forehead wet from perspiration. When he looked up, the glass containers were still there, and the nightmare goes on icy. With the whip of his hand he had them all under his cloak. Then he turned his back to the throne ready to leave. He savored at least this power, for many of Golomouth's slaves weren't even allowed that. He lightly assailed towards the golden stairs. What a boring day, he thought to himself, before disappearing completely. Gale Mouth got annoyed by his servant's behavior growling and really, and then calming down looking at the blue glass containers that were floating above the stairs, moving his hand golden energy flown circling into rents creating a huge golden cloud as red energy lighting started creating shocks and magical dissolutions that slowly shaped a clear image which shone deep space and the futuristic metropoli we all knew as mega civilization. Gale a mouth observed a certain tube, like futuristic massive skyscraper which was built out of silver metal, and it itself looked very modern. Red lights sparkled on the top of its rooftop, as many spaceships were going towards it and out of it on numerous levels, landing on the rooftops, and entering the building gates which were opening for each individual spaceship that entered or leave the complex. The Dark Lord Gale a mouth sat on his red throne observing the whole scene in his sanctuary, being visibly disquisted by the scene he watched. A ZTHESE artificial walls created by these that possess. Against these that do not possess. Make these that have everything. Unable to understand the pain of these that had everything taken away from them fooling hatred between both groups. We will make them slaves to our Deseresa Gale a mouth commented to himself smiling visibly admiring his visions and crazy dark dreams feeling as if in this moment he somehow got the power to conquer entire worlds he was right thought but clouded in his darkness saw only death as means of resolving this matter feeling sorrowful and yet trying to fight off his heart wanting only to carry out the nightmare he had planned for the world. The darkness created unbearable pressure inside his head, as if it wanted to crush him at the court, shattering the soul with pain that overflown him infiltrating every possible essence in his entire existence. He no longer could go back being really an empty shell for the dark energy a slave of destruction. His mind full with negative destruction thoughts slowly disintegrated his presence he wanted to scream from the agony, but was unable as his pride wouldn't let him feeling weak and alone caring only for his own desires the plan that couldn't ever bring happiness. Only destruction being aware of this and yet being engulfed in the darkness he constructed over millennia, his eyes were calm angry and scared at the same moment in few seconds experiencing different states ranging from true happiness to painful sorrow falling between and going up in a split of a second. That was the unbearable pain Gale a mouth felt as he looked at the darkness of his shrine gazing slowly into the distance trying to understand the meaning of his existence wondering whether it had any at all. The aotiful and grotesque young man that became the dark god master of all darkness and rolled over by it. Closing his eyes he returned to the times where even he felt some serenity on a very distant planet covered in aotiful green fields. The smell of the sweet air made the dark lord smile as blue petals were falling on this serene environment and suddenly filled with blood stains and explosions and other images that made him scream in agony. His terrified scream filled the entire chapel making everything go in disarray. 
With his falling hearth this world was crumbling apart as giant dark snakes awaken from Thayer's slumber, and arose towards his throne majestic shadow craters with red eyes were towering above the fallen god a man lost in his despair, and coughing up blood such intense was his pain and hatred for all existence, that he couldn't even bear the thought of existing himself the shadow creatures surprised because of the state of Thayer beloved master not being able to feel the darkness. Inside him not feeling any empathy they just continued silently to observe Thayer Master in his despair the whole temple full of the dark winds created by this dark despair, and above eye opening to look and observe to understand this amount of unbearable suffering a soul covered in darkness might have a a autiful girl walk towards the throne greeted by the dark shadow birds which looked at her with red eyes informing that Thayer Lord was suffering they flown above her as she walked below them she stops walking in front of the golden stairs and slowly gazed upward seeing her master screaming in agony and trying to calm himself she tried to run away. But the dark shadow birds not let her go. Gail a mouth looked at the scene breathing calmly while the girl kneeled down afraid, moving his hand he made the dark birds fly away from the girl. As come closer chilled he proclaimed breathing calmly slowly gazing below the golden stairs looking at the girl dressed in blue dress with white boots she slowly walked up to the throne. Gail Amouth said to her will you be baptized for me? Looking at her with his dark eyes as the snakes arose surprised near the girl looking at her from below with fair red eyes the girl walked back baptized? She asked surprised wondering what the dark lord meant by this phrase faithfully looking into his eyes meeting only darkness inside him as he stood up and slowly walked down to the girl. You can have a power to change the world he quickly added as he was coming to her and gently kneeled down looking at her surprised smiling pretending he cared about her trying to make himself look warmer, trustable. Change the world? The girl spoke looking into his eyes feeling a bit confused shocked by his sudden proposition as the snakes around them looked with disbelief wondering why would the Dark Lord propose such a thing to something so inferior as a little 15 year old girl with blunt hair. Yet the power to stop tragedies, to save Lithia said Gail a mouth touching her cheeks and looking at the girl smiling making sure she was calm and ready to obey every single word he told her. Nearing very clausily and standing up waving his hand creating whirlpools of golden energy as powerful dark winds started to blow again, the shrine's pillars and columns were filled with green hieroglyphic signs warning about the dark spell that was about to be created dark red pentagrams appeared as the girl stood up looking around scared power. She asked hesitantly a bit shocked because of the dark manifestations that took place scaring the girl a bit but she was calmed by Gail a mouth who gently patted her on the arm relieving all stress from her body as if flown away as dark smoke calming her instantly and making the dark birds that sat on the columns and observed the whole ritual fly into the air eating the dark smoke as it was grain and flying in circles squetching hoping. The Dark Lord would kill the girl for them to eat her, but he had other plans, as he looked directly into her eyes. You can kill the one who killed your sister. Will you accept this power? He proclaimed and kneeled down slowly looking onto her head, as if he would be planning to propose to her. This was however a sarcastic move one she wouldn't ever understand instead looking at him faithfully. Not suspecting what would happen next. Can I she asked feeling relieved someone understood her pain she bared since so many years ago from that time when it happened a very sad and dark memory her eyes were filled with tears even more when he suddenly stabbed her with his sword looking shocked at the whole scene as blood was spilling out her chest she fallen on the red shining floor filling it with her blood as the birds tried to attack her falling towards her. Gail a mouth suddenly made a protective circle telling them to back away she died crying he then kneeled down touched her neck creating symbols on it as it was covered in darkness she even more shocked opened her eyes breathing her first breath scoped she was alive. As while you have been reborn as a completely different greater being no more shall you be just a weak shell go forward my beautiful daughter let's commence the plan to create a perfect ideal world a gale a mouth smirked as he told these words not believing in them himself as the girl surprised stand it up. What star is her name? The dark god asked as he helped the girl to stand up looking into her eyes reading thoughts that came out of her head looking in it ominously the girl didn't know what to answer she was a bit dizzy her head full of emotions ranging from anger to happiness she breathed calmly and looked at the dark good smiling happily and helplessly as he closed his eyes and stood up. 
Then I star LL name you, your name will be Arua, Arua Gem in he proclaimed, and walked past her waving his hand, as dark powers filled the temple creating a purple cloud the dark god looked into the center of this purple mist, the girl shocked walked to the dark god looking through to his back at the marvels the dark lord was creating she innocently looked at him. Aru she asked surprised not really understanding the situation it was hard for her to comprehend this situation or the mad ambitions the dark god had. He gazed on her seeing the girl very cheerful. As he why yes this will do, now I will reveal the secret you were longing for. Blaze Master, this is the identity of the one who murdered your beloved sister Agail. A mouth looked at her calmly, as if he was hurted by revealing her the truths that were his lies created to fulfill his mad ambitions. Then can I kill him? She asked tilting her head to the side looking at the dark god who approached the energy to Ren's making an older out of it a golden older filled with ancient in scripture which he studied very clausally reading very slowly. As it gloned in front of him the dark birds looked at Gale a mouth very curiously. No you can't start to he finally answered the girl looking at her analyzing, waving his hand making blue smoke cover her as she looked at it very shocked and surprised. Why? Arua continued to inquire this question looking hopefully in the eyes of the Dark God. You haven't been perfected yet my child Gale a mouth expressed as he studied the girl's body being very analytical his gaze made the girl blush embarrassed by the sudden interest the Dark God Gale a mouth had for her, believing it was something good. As I our energy channels must be perfected for ability improve, if you were to confront the one known as Blaze Master, he is a skilled foe and like anything you ever meet to said Gale a mouth looking at the girls working acting, like a sage for the child, planning to invoke the forbidden arts of dark craft and harmful magic he slowly tempted her towards a very dangerous fate. He wasn't however bothered by this fact his conscience was dead for a very long time only his ambition to once again invoke the anti-god spell which in his mind would end the entire existence a bit foolish desire impossible because of the hate that fooled every core of this dark dream no one wanted to die even he himself betrayed that evil plan and yet it was the only way he saw to follow through not realizing that even he himself didn't want to perish from such a sorrowful and tearful world. Darkness that engulfed his mind was now spreading in the entire shrine, fooling, and furthermore fooling every corner only adding more darkness into the shrine this holy temple of darkness, from which all calamity was to spread onto our futuristic utopia, this darkness, that created illusions lies and deceptions, that flown outside to the external world, as a girl stood in front of the dark god. Arua looked sad into the distance seeing only how the darkness filled the temple she was a bit frightened and tensed, looking into the distance she merely looked for answers to questions, that clouded into her mind, she was now filled with doubts asking herself was it the right way to go. Somewhere in her hearth she knew what was the real purpose the dark god had, she knew it was something very evil and terrible just like the trick, before she too detested such visions, but she also felt an unbearable pain of losing someone that she loved, this nightmare was terrible, and he the one that standed in front of her bared the prospect of ending this terrible pain. But she tried to hide her feeling in front of Gale a mouth thought the angel of darkness knew them, he could read them, and planned to use them to his advantage, after all darkness was an useful fuel, to make everyone hate each other, and the world they live in that was his goal, after all. As Adnus makes you have an unbearable express Iodna he finally commented smirking and looking into Orr's eyes, savouring the darkness and thorns in her soul, they really were delicious to him, as if it were some kind of delicacies, the dark god planned to consume he walked over to the girl kneeling down looking straightly face, to face making Aru a surprised. Sorry she said very sadly lowering her head in obedience, understanding that he was her master, and she was Morelli his servant, roles, that shouldn't be questioned, her purpose was simple, to obey every command the dark god would have. Nothing else no discussion quite simple, if you waste some time, to think about it. That's okay my child. Now go to bed he said breaking the chain of command as he slowly petted her hair, just as if he was her father not master, but it wasn't due to love that he calmed her emotions it was just to seduce her to make her follow his maddening ambition slowly standing he turned back and stepped on the golden steps. As he no. No I don't start to want to. South so she screamed running after him stepping on the golden steps hesitantly and with a dizzy head. Gale a mouth was annoyed by her tenacity turning towards her and looking on the girl with a mad face. I order you Arua to listen to me. 
He yelled at her restoring his chain of command standing and looking angrily, but also a bit intrigued at the girl. It was the first time he saw something of this nature this power, he again started to fear his servant seeing something he couldn't understand. Gail Mouth feared things he couldn't understand. As in oh she screamed as she was feeling dizzy and weaking in his eyes, this in turn calmed him making him understand as the girl collapsed he rushed to save her, not fully understanding why he did that. Was it compassion? No he detested all things yet he hold her firmly and gently looked onto her. As he wh a foolish slave yeah, he mumbled to himself. The hypocrisy of the world which Gail Mouth hated was created by simple ignorance by definitions that labeled one societary groups above the other, rich against poor who were criminalized because they dared to live against the will of these that seen them only as a less trash. After all for these masters of the world any opposition was an act of crime that should be punished by death for them people and demons were merely slaves to be used to earn money which would be gathered for their ambitions because the rich should have money and a lot of it all of money from all the reserves possible that was the goal of the greedy horrors of this system. Of course if they were the only ones wanting money they could be ridiculed have doubts. That's why they needed others to desire the same, creating a world culture, whole entire structures based on greed and envy. Helping to create the establishment and the system, well greed was just one thing that helps the system to hold authority over individuals just one of these lies, that money could bring happiness. Envy and greed, lust or even obsession with everything the material world had to offer and being restrained for that in the name of morality customs or even laws that had nothing to do with justice. Poor however described as outcasts by them have always been restrained or even tied up unable to do anything because no one really wanted to help them. They became a bother to these rich majorities who created the oppressive regimes which rallied billions in the name of hate making soldiers not care whom they kill as long as they're paid. After all there's nothing wrong in killing terrorists or criminals they want to destroy as your sanct way of living got our world built from illusions and hate. People and demons treat each other as enemies even if they're from the same social group, still forced to compete for money destroying each other's, in the name of illusions created by the rich. The way of living a better start have become an excuse for mass genocides, in the name of law created by states, or in our times even by single corporations, that become states, full worlds maximizing their revenue, and tying up their workers with prospects of coupons, that's what became of money and gold they were replaced with coupons, after all mega civilization didn't need a single currency, because people and demons were required to live only in within corporations as eternal workforce these living beyond were enemies that's all. Unless appropriate diplomatic deals were made by rich CEOs. Every single aspect of life could become a subject of these deals it was the CEOs that decided what they are workers eaten, what brands were they using as food, cloths, drugs etc. It was all decided during business meetings of corporation leaders where concern about the well-being of the workers wasn't ever an issue during these disputes, contrary to the popular belief of course. What was therefore discussed? Who and how can get more money, the rich divided the society as if it was some kind of cake. Deciding who should be accepted, who should be ignored, and who should be eliminated. That was the main purpose of their existence. The corporations feed on the naivete of its workers creating deals that allow them to abuse the weak that is the law of mega civilization, that is the law that rules over the corporate buildings and billions of people and demons that are nothing but slaves only in more modern, utopian settings lied by everyone and everything. In schools taught propaganda they follow blindly orders of their corporate leaders who have real political power view themselves as gods, despite being only man or servants of the real gods themselves, yet as long as it's on the grounds of their corporations they can make even deities out of themselves, in the corporate walls there is no higher powers above the CEO this is the true power of market unrestrained without any institutional governance. Here in space corporations which create platforms become their government it is a fair deal and makes the development and restructuration of the void space war easier without any institutionalized pressured or long or actic procedures, simple conquering, taking possession or buying undeveloped space and then building a habitat that usually takes the form of a large universal metropoly combining different entities that guard the constructoral integrity together. 
the incredible logistics used to sustain this future environment and allowing free interactions for what humanity and other forms of life achieved they were worthy of the title of gods and perhaps that's why the real god allowed for this slowly making sure knowledge flows freely god to enjoyed this spectacle but detested hate greed and ignorance which was fooled by the leaders of corporations who went too far the technocrats that wished to rule and higher societies gathered inside the tub like skyscraper Lord Gale a mouth was observing, lights were turned on in the silver room as drinks, and snacks were put in on the huge golden conference table, in which built-in square display devices projected three-dimensional holographs showing the identity, and a three-dimensional model of the leaders assigned to their places. In this temple of commerce everyone had an arranged and assigned seat which he or she will occupy these seats, or the seats of power and authority. For these seats human and demonic lives were often sacrificed. Robots and flying mini spaceships were serving the guests that looked mostly as elderly humans dressed in official suits helping them to sit. They looked dignified, clean, well-mannered everything in their designs was fashionable and well-planned as women were sitting near the men symbolizing the importance of both sexes in the commerce sphere. They slowly occupied the golden futuristic seats full of different kind of gadgets and buttons that served to increase the comfort of these that thought of themselves of being stronger than gods. A crowd of people fooled the huge room gathering and sitting in front of the table below in class like futuristic benches that were full of many built-in computers these enormous crowd of women and man was the representation of the universe as media corporations because every major TV or radio station or even blogs and other forms of propaganda send in their newscaster to wear colorful futuristic costumes making them more interesting than the clean business man and woman that were only arranged fashion. The journalists' cloths were indeed more interesting. They were colorful costumes, like the colors of rainbow with abstract three-dimensional logos of media corporations made it a real sight for our eyes. These people looked at the stage on which the huge futuristic golden table was placed. The stage itself was in fact a wall that was used to divide the audience from the main actors, who were chatting smiling and talking about unrelated stuff preparing themselves to give the spectacle that was long awaited. A very gross topic to deal with wealthy about the poor. The leaders were disputing which aid ought to full words to use for masking their horrible plans. Not knowing they or greed would be used by a much more powerful force than themselves. While at the same and the golden corridors which were well light and deflecting the futuristic lights and at the same time showing off its glorious design, futuristic arrangements such as the plasma monitors that hanged from the walls showing the corporation's TV programs that were streamed through the corporation's internal net service. A young man was walking he was young enough to see his future but not old enough to meet them. His skills granted him passage through his schooling. Though these skills simplified things, nothing was given to him easily. He fought his own respective battles and won them fusely with courage and valor. While he was still a child, he was sought out by a high-ranking member of Nuvik Saryaya's Royal Guard. They saw in him a perfect soldier, one who could be molded in whichever way they desired. During his years at school they had him train when he was not participating in academics. Every waking moment was spent either under a teacher's or master's tutelage. At his 18th year, he graduated the academy at top of his class. From that, straight into the pits of hell. After his youth he was immediately taken into His Majesty's Royal Space Marines, where he continued honing his skills. He chose, as one of his disciplines, sword fighting, and became one of the most skilled swordsmen in the galaxy. During his time at the Academy he forged his sidearm blade, which he keeps with him at all times. He created it how many would put it, a ETHE old-fashioned WAYA. He made it out of material found in a dead Stara S cohort. This material, Dumalium, pronounced Dumalium, is also known as Dark Star Fragments, and is incredibly hard. He himself forged it, folding it over again and again until he saw it fit to be finely shaped. This material makes the sword unbreakable and able to cut through most anything. He shaped it into a cutlass, and laid a dark gloss over the half to give it a black and shimmer. He trained after the late Master Gerardi who died while the Academy was under attack from the enemy. The incursion was targeted late at night and killed 37 students and 12 teachers. While he led many younger cadets to safety during the attack. 
For this heroism he was granted a spot in an upcoming exploration mission, which he was made to lead after the commanding officer resigned. The expedition was a rescue mission to save the people who were the first explorers. When they arrived on the desolate planet, there were no signs of life. It was later discovered that there were creatures living beneath the surface, and they kidnapped the explorers with the intent to present them to their EDEIDYA. Captain Howard leaving to lead a team of twelve into the caverns, and returned to the surface with only a few injuries the scars on his eye and hand. He was welcomed home, as a war hero, and was presented an award for his bravery. Captain Howard Leavington has been called in for a promotion to commander of his own starship. He is now on his way to the ceremony. There are many high-ranking officers in attendance, including the constable who recommended him to the academy. He walks into the room and no one notices him until he bumps into a person while walking from the back to the front of the room. The gruff general, a man with a thick mustache and eyebrows, but no other hair on his head, turned to yell at the person who bumped him, but realized who it was. A.O.H. boy, look was here, he exclaimed to the crowd, and they all stopped and turned to meet his gaze. All at once the crowd begins jeering and shouting. The captain smiles at the crowd and a booming voice calls out over the loudspeaker, real right, all right. Let us calm down now the MC soothes the crowd, as the captain heads for the stage. A.G.O.O.D. evening. First off, I would like to thank all of you for coming. I know many of you have left while you a reposts early in the morning, and will have to return, but in due time. We're here to award this mana he turns to our hero, and points at ETHIS man, has done things that many of you wouldn't attempt. Has gone places some of you have never imagined. Been heroic at times where heroism would have ee gotten him killed. This man deserves much more than we can give him, he has earned this so the MC opens a small box with the captain as new rank star come forth. I imbue you with your new stature star he places the rank on the captain as shoulder. The man that suddenly entered the stage had gathered applauses from all that were present, business people that watched the presentation, and the reporters who frantically pressed the buttons on Thayer consoles, sending Thayer broadcasts into the far reaches of the universe. This man despite being young was one of the bravest soldiers in the known universe, and still despite that the greedy servants of the system planned to use him as a pawn in Thayer games the old man dressed in a wonderful gold at Doxido, and an old style gentleman's hat with visible computer attachment, as the suit was just really stylized to look as an old style gentleman's costume, yet containing all the latest gadgets these kind of wardrobe posses, standed and enthusiastically clapped. Van coughing up a bit to demand some silence. As being a hero as a virtuia he started taking his stage, and walked to the young man shaking his hand as he id is a true honor, to meet such a fine youngster, like yourself, as I said being a hero is a virtue especially in our dangerous times, when many of us face attacks from enemy corporations, and social outcasts. Universe harbors many criminals, and outrageous individuals, that spend their times plotting against the established safe zones many of us created by hard labor that's why it's always important to be vigilant against enemies, outsiders, and foreign agents, whose main objectives are to rob us from the peace we established. Our corporation is therefore proud to have among their military forces people who are not afraid to fight oppression. Universe is a dark place hostile to man full of demons, aliens, and things which we should all pray to never meet. It is in my opinion that universe isn't a place that should be inhabited by man, representing the voice that unfortunately sounds loudly very late, therefore it is our duty to recreate what we once destroyed. This hard lesson teaches us responsibility for every single being that is in our care. Yet there are irresponsible groups lead only by financial concerns, or evil ideology being intoxicated by powers that are beyond our imagination, fools, that created tragedies many of which, present now with us Howard Leavington saw for himself it's an awesome honor to guest people that can tell this terrible story to us, please share it with USA said the old man Boeing, in a respect as please enlighten us about the dangers that surround our wall so ended the man, and returned to his designated seat at the golden table. While the whole room was filled with applauses, as the attention centered at the young man the captain delves deep into his memories, remembering back to the last few days of his time at the academy. A time before his official service to the Corps, he earned experiences there that would save him later in life. 
Howard begins his day on a cold and dreary night. Everything was calm and quiet. Howard had just turned in for the evening and was climbing into bed. Suddenly, from out of nowhere, there is a loud thud. A few seconds later followed a large explosion. Huge mortars arc into the building. Howard gets up, another explosion nearly knocks him off of his feet. He makes his way to the hallway to see what was going on. Academy teachers and professors are in the corridors, running into every room trying to wake the students. He meets one of the teachers ASIR. What is going on? The professor replies ETHE school is under attack. Evacuate immediately. A. Howard makes his way downstairs. Looking up he notices that the staircases above him are engulfed in flames. He continues on through another hall, then through a door he can hear screaming. A-H-E-L-P? The door is stuck. W-E-A retrap to Howard tries the door. It W-O-N-A-T budge. He thinks quickly and notices a fire extinguisher. On the wall, he breaks the glass and grabs it. Howard uses it to bash the handle off the door, before finally knocking the door off of its hinges. A-F-O-L-L-O-W-M-E-A he says to the frightened students. Howard escorts them from the building and back to the teacher's back, to the present golden rays of light fallen down on the captain, who wore the blue or gray Starfleet uniform as he was telling his story, to the world slowly describing the incident concerned with momentary details being camered by dark spheres that floated near him. These robots of corporative origin were controlled from the desks in front of the place Mr. Howard was standing delivering his speech. Spheres circled the captain as if they were his satellites. People controlling them were the serf staff of some universal media corporation. A young dark haired boy and a fat man of 30 years subordinates, both dressed in white shirts, carrying the company rectangular logo, looking at a woman dressed all red. The woman in red shiny clothing with light red hair, slim figure. She reminded the Amazon or goddess with her unnatural beauty, simply putting it, everything was perfect in her attractive tiny black skirt that revealed her light brown skin and beautiful white heels. She knew how to walk seductively, knew how to correct her leather red jacket to look tempting and seductive. It was part of this blue-eyed 29, probably 29-year-old woman's trade. She was a huntress that hunted for every information, being able to sacrifice everything her buddy had to offer in order to extract this vital piece that would make the next news. On the news coverage of her universal media company, she too was a soldier that was able to go very far. Gently sitting on the stage as she looked back at the stage and at the man who was telling his story analyzing him a bit, preparing herself to ask the question she knew that the people were looking at her. But she also knew that the dark-haired boy and the fat man next to him weren't at her level. The dark-haired boy inputted some commands into his computer device, turning his attention towards the fat guy waving his hands on the man who was controlling a huge camera crane that lowered itself closer, camering the woman she angrily turned her head on the OHER side. She wanted to get her job done. Sometimes she just hated her job. So messy mess she just get bored of all of this. But it was her job after all. And she loved it most of the time. The young man waved his IR going in few minutes as he said while the fat guy was synchronizing the volume with the audio image that was recorded by his futuristic equipment. Lowering the camera crane to get a full image of the woman as she'd begun her broadcast she stand up and prepared herself to ask TH questions, but she couldn't say a word. That was strange for her. She wasn't afraid, but yet she wasn't as brave as she was before. Above on the stage a heated debate was taking place. The elites were arguing about the most effective way to justify they agreed. The young reporter only now started to realize how huge and powerful this event was. How small and shallow were the minds of these that were supposed to rule and hired galaxies? These men and women of welfare were acting like children. Now she was supposed to ask the question, but only the questions that were scripted for her to be asked. No questions that would be important. She had a script and a role to play and this was what frightened her. She began to bite her lips wondering WGAT to do now. She had no idea. So many thoughts were running through off her mind and she was scared and confused. If she asks the wrong question, she will be fired for sure. But what was the right question? As what the fuck you're doing get out there the dark haired man yelled at the woman, seeing her troubled almost praying she would already start the broadcast as precious time was moving forward, yes? 
in this temple of greed even time had a price, and the woman was supposed to act in the right way in this time, for which she would be paid by the media company. As he ITS your first day on the job don't scream we he whispered silently to her hoping to motivate the woman to do her job she started looking at her on her with a scared and puzzled look. Why I am so nervous. Oh god I don't want to be here. What am I thinking I have to focus? I want to disappear she thought. The young man walked over to her and patted her back. As what's up you know what to do right the dark haired man asked while given signs to the fat guy that operated the camera as EITS a big deal. We got to do it or the boss will kill us. It's your chance to shine the man added looking at her and walking back to his friend. As he are we gonna do it or not to the fat guy asked as just give the girl her dimmy the young man replied. The man shown her signs and turned on the camera as I how run he yelled and expected the girl to perform well I, I can't do it I have no idea what is going on with me I have never felt that way before I'm so sorry but I at a moment she said and ran away crying. The fat guy turned off the camera and sighted almost weeping as the young guy angrily kicked the camera as we're so dead he looked at his friend sitting down and taking out a cigarette walking over to his friend and sharing the cigarette with him lighting up himself and for his buddy as he I could have had my ex into this fuck he screamed she goes to the other end of the room crying he'll die he'll surely be I E A she cried her fear being incredible. She felt as if she was entering a cave full of terrible monsters. And she was right, these weren't humans, or even demons, these greedy humanoidal creatures were worse than anything hell could produce, she breathed hardly, not feeling alright I think, I think, I will, she started crying again. The tears were falling from her face ruining her makeup. She slowly pushed her head to the side as she started vomiting from stress, making the medical team come closer to her, a very young golden haired boy dressed in futuristic white cloths accompanied with two girls, one green haired the other pink haired, dressed in quite fashionable, medical uniforms came closer to the young journalist as he are you alright miss of the young doctor calmly asked. I don't know I have never felt it she cried. The young doctor walked closer, kneeling down and attached to white silent recall mini computer device that shone strange symbols and played a calm song. He took the device away and read a report that was shown on its screen as EIT appears to be stressed miss of a young doctor calmly replied, smiling to her childishly as he was just 10 years old, only an apprentice under another doctor practicing to become the best doctor in the entire corporation. The boy was excited because it was his first serious medical mission but I had never been nervous before. What's wrong with me she cried louder. Tears started to fall down her cheeks again. Her makeup was dot daily ruined. Oh damn I look terrible she thought. The boy smiled calmly and slowly stood up as he but it's alright you see most people get nervous when they work too hard and it causes serious medical problems that can be cured after calming down the boy smiled as his blue eyes shine in excitement while he himself was being observed by a dark bearded man who was the doctor that teach this new apprentice. The room was covered in golden lights, as other crews were working very tentaclessly, covering this event. The girl looked at them crying feeling so humiliated, she was humiliated feeling so weak, not being able to do anything unlike the boy, she herself didn't have the courage to face the challenge ahead, she was very terrified of this pressure, now feeling abandoned wondering what she will do if she gets fired for her it wasn't just a matter of a job, she was raised to become a journalist. Being raised by the media company in its facilities, if she couldn't do her job, what other reason would be there for coming back for living? Why so cruel approach to her? Why to pose such questions? What is worth life in the system? It's worth nothing. In society's life of single individuals is often worthless demons, angels, and even humans are used as slaves by few well-established greedy individuals that in turn are used by their own greed, becoming slaves to it in this systemized world usefulness meant life not being of any use meant it was time to die. For why would the system and the established order care for anyone that cannot be made profit from, be in debt stay clones, buy, spend, go to work, earn money, and pay that is the role of everyone inside the system, nothing else matters it's a sad reality greed and lust rolled everything and took away passion, dreams, and even love making it forbidden, not responsible, shameful behavior, true feelings were made to be disgusted as greed and lust were glorified taking their place. She was a female journalist, 
Raised in that manner by the almighty corporation, she didn't have any relatives, any family, just her corporation, friends at work, in that job, she failed everyone, because she started to have feelings, and was not comfortable with it, because of the shock, seeing these mighty, she realized how weak she was, how worthless her existence was. The girl wanted to scream in horror, but couldn't. Being surrounded by billions of people and demons, billions of ants, that served their respective queens, being able to sacrifice their lives just to attain the goals given to them by the corporations that was the world this girl belonged to where the fate of these that worked had no meaning to these for whom they worked, the rich felt, that their almighty gods, who cannot be denied anything, corruption flourishes in these conditions. Injustice prevails in the worlds ruled by the system lies and deceptions were used to bind and oppress souls like chains, that were morally created for that purpose, and added thorns to tear into their hearts making them bleed this created more pain, that slowly gathered, as they were unaware that it happened that they were consumed from the inside, the things they believed were to nourish them actually slowly, and gradually consumed them. This disastrous force was created by the lower instincts, fueled by greed and lust system oppressed everybody in that room, but only that girl, that journalist she alone was starting to understand this, how unpleasant it was, this was good for it marked the beginning of her salvation these feelings of sorrow and sadness were God's gift to her, to allow her emotions, to manifest, to free her from these shackles, and allow to escape. She knew it finally, she was to run away try to leave this corporation world leave it all, and seek freedom, a world that is better, true paradise, that was hidden deep below, in the structures where outcasts live and thrive. To escape to the world she knew nothing about, to a place, that at first glance looks like hell, being unfriendly without luxuries, abandoned, or dirty, where only criminals, and terrorists hide from the reaches of law, this was how these that opposed the system, and its greed were portrayed by these monsters that thought they rule all, this is how I was viewed, because I dared to speak against the wishes of the rich, you either become an important, or a terrorist. That's how this minority pretends to be a majority, in the world, that ain't welcoming even for them this reality, that was created because of it, couldn't last forever, and yet appeared to be very stable, this too was merely an illusion created in order to enslave living beings as long, as it was possible, besides even if it fallen another place, like this would only take its place. That's how it was, this was how it would be unless a miracle would happen but even a miracle doesn't last forever, this ain't places a paradise might be born, one must go into a journey to find it but every journey, needs courage, and has its own dangers, it's not safe to travel, that's how it was always. The young journalist knew someone, that loved to travel, he was her mentor one of the best journalists of his time, she was thinking about the past years with him. They were the best in her life. She remembered every single time he helped her. Rest in peace. I will never forget you. She thought. The girl remembered this special person. He was just an ordinary man, one of these classical professionalists, that done this job, because of his passion. She remembered the old brown trench coat I must pick up myself. I'm not a crybaby. I loved him but I can't change the fate she thought. She slowly stood up cleaning herself up taking out a golden mirror from the pink arm back, gently correcting her makeup, trying to smile, correcting her lips with her devilishly red lipstick now in red e she said breathing hardly looking around and observing how other crews handled the job, she saw how the dark haired man was frustrated, and she decided to move in order to save her career. The people in the room were busy moving from one place to another, as on the stage the main event was being played out, she finally understood, that she needed to go out on that battlefield, to fight this media war, for such was her fate, this was the existence she was born into, the girl, or more exactly the woman matured in an instant, but was she up to that challenge? Meanwhile another hero of this parade was decorated by the corporate CEO, standing proudly on the stage being welcomed by cheers and flashes, the handsome young dark haired boy dressed in a red space suit, with white boots, sparkly eyes, John was a normal teen, who joined the army, now once he get out he realized that the world he used to know does not exist anymore. Everyone start to killing each other and war start in space. John looked at the gathered people, and took the medal with some kind of disgust, trying to conceal his feelings. 
He standed on the golden floor being cheered by the corporation's managers that represented the world of greed, the cause of these wars, and suffering he came closer to the classic all design microphone and started speaking, but before he could do so a fat chubby CEO standed up and begun his speech as EW we all have witnessed the hostilities of the outside group the man has started, looking at the gathered crowd, and then turning his attention to his comrade, a young looking woman with golden hair dressed in red or pink corporate suit, who only closed her silver eyes, encouraging the chubby CEO to speak as EW we all have seen it. Then why are we allowing it? The outside world endangers our prospects and our future. These are facts. Reports of sickness and uncontrolled mutations, gentlemen we're standing on the brink of our destruction, unless we won't eradicate the problem at once. Such hives should be exterminated and area incorporated into domestic facilities. Its resource should be used for the growth of our corporate empire. As it was revealed by my rating agency, the outcasts are the cause of our looses, parasiting on energy and other industries. They create disturbances in our activities, endangering and causing looses to our commercial reputation. These in turn produce defective results in our morality, enabling defective tendencies to spread the so-called world that borders with our facilities consists of ruined platform projects and criminal facilites that lost their economic value long ago. Therefore it was suggested by the group of commercial analysts to undergo with a revitalization program, removing the danger and sustaining growth. Let me make clear, outcasts are not a nation or even a rebel fraction, as they themselves claim to be. They are a mixture of defective and renegade criminal operations that are not controlled by any jurisdiction. We cannot allow this. These tendencies are the causes of wars. Then we shall wage a preventive war. We assume that the outcasts will effectively disappear after the conclusion of our military operations in the area. We plan to revitalize the area and to incorporate its structures under our jurisdiction. I explained the chubby seer getting applauses from all fractions and the crowd of this greedy corporate agglomeration. The corporation planned to take over the platforms to expand eliminating these that lived there, or just happened to travel through them. The outcasts in this case were everybody who didn't belong to the corporation that was representing the system in our case but this also categorized these that were exiled or choose to leave the corporation to try and live a better life. Now all these live hoods were targeted because they were poorer than the ones ruling the corporations. Everything that was different from the main establishment was now being targeted because of their difference, because of a simple fact of not being categorized. System never wishes to acknowledge things that are too different from their greed-based ideology pretending the other side does not exist or portraying it in a very negative manner. If it can it tries to exterminate freedom in all forms, because system is in fact a tyranny, a tyranny of richty.